I'm Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's news update for Wednesday, November the 27th, 2013. Israel security agency the Shin Bet announced yesterday that two Salafi jihadi terrorists who were in the middle of planning a terror attack were killed by an Israeli counterterrorism unit. The terrorists were reportedly planning an attack for the coming days and were in a car filled with explosives and firearms when they were intercepted by a counterterrorism mission in the village of Yata near Hebron. Israeli forces opened fire at the car's tires and the suspects fired back. Following an exchange of fire, the two terror suspects were killed. Security forces shortly thereafter encountered a third armed suspect who was also shot and killed. A senior official told Ynet that the suspects were part of what seems to have been a local group inspired by radical Islam. He said they were planning to target the IDF and it is likely that they were planning a kidnapping. Security sources said additional details would be forthcoming in the course of the investigation and that additional members of the terror cell were still being pursued. Through a peaceful Diplomatic. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry addressed the U.S. Congress in a video message released yesterday where he detailed the interim agreement struck with Iran in Geneva over the weekend and stressed that the agreement was only a first step and that Iran would have to prove that it was complying with the agreement's terms. It's really up to Iran to make the choice to prove that its program is indeed peaceful. They can say it, but saying it doesn't make it happen. It has to be proven. And in the end, they have to be the ones to make the choice to do that. Kerry also said that if the agreement falls apart, Iran would face tougher sanctions. Meanwhile, Reuters reports that Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif said today that Iran would continue construction at the nuclear reactor site at Arak seemingly going against the recent deal in which Iran said that it would not make, quote, any further advances of its activities at the heavy water reactor. However, Zarif said today that the capacity at the Iraq site is not going to increase. It means no new nuclear fuel will be produced and no new installations will be installed, but construction will continue there. And staying with Iran, in an interview marking his first 100 days in office, New Iranian President Hassan Rouhani inferred that Israel, among other enemies of the Islamic Republic, has become isolated over its views on the deal. According to remarks broadcast by Iranian press TV, Rouhani, while not referring to Israel by name, said everyone is happy about this deal except for warmongers and that regime, which is an illegitimate one that occupies. Thousands gathered today at Tel Aviv's Rabin Square in Israel to pay tribute to one of Israel's most popular and beloved singers. Arik Einstein passed away suddenly yesterday of what doctors say was a ruptured aneurysm. He was 74. Einstein's casket was placed at Robin Square this afternoon to allow Israelis to pay their respects to the legendary singer and songwriter, whose most popular songs include Ani Ve'ata, Me and You, Ani Ve'ata, Az Yavohu, and Uf Gozal, Fly Little Bird. Uf Gozal, Chatochet HaShamayim, a funeral procession then followed to Trumpledor Cemetery in Tel Aviv, where Einstein was laid to rest. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called Einstein's songs the soundtrack of the country. He said Arik was the greatest of them all. We all grew up on his songs. You said Arik Einstein, and you said the land of Israel. He was a wonderful singer, Netanyahu said, and a wonderful person. Israel's President Shimon Peres said Einstein's musical notes will continue to fill the country even after his passing. Peres said he wrote his songs during our difficult days and during our uplifting moments. I loved his songs and knew what many others know. There was no one else like him. Einstein is survived by his second wife and four daughters. The Jerusalem Post reports that Israel and the European Union reached an agreement last night that would allow Israel to participate in the prestigious Horizon 2020 Research and Development Program. 
As we reported to you yesterday, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu had urged some sort of compromise between Israel and the EU to allow the participation following the EU's announcement earlier this summer of its settlement guidelines, which bar cooperation and funding to Israeli organizations over the Green Line. According to the compromise now reached, Israel would write explicitly in an appendix to the agreement that it doesn't accept the guidelines, while the EU will write that the guidelines reflect European policy. Under the present agreement, Israel will contribute 500 million euro and could receive upwards of 1.4 billion euro in support of research and innovation projects over the next few years. The American Jewish Committee welcomed the announcement that Israel will join the R&D program. Daniel Schwamenthal, who is director of the AJC Transatlantic Institute, said participation in Horizon 2020 is an important step forward in Israel's relations with the EU. Further saying, given Israel's standing as a leading center of research and innovation, this is clearly a win for all involved. A prominent French Jewish leader addressed a symposium on anti-Semitism at the European Parliament yesterday, where he said that most French Jewish parents enroll their children in private schools rather than public because of the growing phenomenon of anti-Semitism in France. Roger Kukerman, president of the CRIF umbrella group of French Jewish communities, said that anti-Semitism affects Jewish families in France very seriously, and that's the main reason there are so few Jewish children in public schools, with most going to Jewish or Christian private schools. The symposium held yesterday was organized by the European Jewish Congress and B'nai B'rith International with European lawmakers on the findings of a recent survey undertaken last year by the EU's Fundamental Rights Agency, which was taken among nearly 6,000 Jews from nine European countries. That survey showed that French Jews were the most concerned by anti-Semitism, with 85% of the 1,137 respondents from France describing it as a big problem. Kukerman said at the gathering, Jews do not feel comfortable in France and across Europe, adding that top-down attempts to ban circumcision and kosher slaughter compound the effect of bottom-up anti-Semitism. Washington's Jewish community will mark the fourth anniversary of Jewish State Department subcontractor Alan Gross being held in a jail in Cuba. The Jewish Community Relations Council of Greater Washington, together with Alan Gross's wife Judy, will gather on December the 3rd in Lafayette Park outside of the White House in a protest. And they will call on President Obama to make securing, Gross, securing Gross's release rather a priority. Alan Gross, whose health has deteriorated significantly since his imprisonment, was arrested in December of 2009 for providing computers and Internet access to Cuba's Jewish community. He is serving a 15-year sentence for, quote, crimes against the state. The Jewish Week reports that Israeli President Shimon Peres met earlier this week with New York's mayor-elect Bill de Blasio. De Blasio, who takes office on January the 1st, sent out a photo of the meeting on his Twitter account yesterday, where he tweeted that he had the honor of meeting President Peres and discussing the close ties between New York City and Israel. De Blasio's spokeswoman Liz Smith later told the Jewish Week that the mayor-elect met with Peres on Monday, along with Israel Consul General Ido Aharoni, for a private and informal meeting. Paris was in New York City briefly to present a Medal of Distinction to Nobel laureate Elie Wiesel. Hanukkah, the Festival of Lights, begins this evening, Wednesday, November the 27th. And we have special Hanukkah programming here on Shalom TV, including a first night of Hanukkah celebration tonight at 6.30 with Dr. Ruth Westheimer lighting the first candle. Later tonight at 7, Shalom TV's telecast from the Conference of Presidents 50th Anniversary Gala. At 9, actor Henry Winkler joins Mark Golub on L'Chaim. And at 10, a replay of the latest episode of The Wisdom of Dr. Ruth Westheimer. And with the long Thanksgiving holiday weekend ahead, some other programming highlights to make a note of, including a wonderful meeting with Alan Dershowitz on L'Chaim, which will be shown Sunday at noon and at 6 p.m. And on Sunday at 8 p.m., be sure to watch another Shalom TV exclusive 
Avi Hoffman in his one-man show, Still Jewish After All These Years. Plus, of course, our nightly Hanukkah candle lighting at 6.30, which features, among others, actors Richard Schiff, Ari Brand, and Five Finkel. You can check the Shalom TV website for more details of our Hanukkah programming running throughout the holiday, as well as our regular programming at ShalomTV.com. And that's Shalom TV's news update for Wednesday, November the 27th, 2013. I'm Tisha Bader. I will be back after the holiday weekend on Monday. Wishing you a happy Thanksgiving and a very happy Hanukkah. Hatsameach.